Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and in this video, we're gonna create an awesome and massive wintry base. What up, mini family? I'm a huge fan of making bases, but what's better than making bases? Making a gigantic one. If you're unfamiliar with the game Kings of War, something special about it is a feature called multi-basing. Instead of having all your minis on individual small bases, you can have an entire unit or a large portion of it on one gigantic one. Having such a large area for basing allows for more creativity, so let's give it a shot. I was in the mood for winter, so it's getting a little cold here this time of year. I liked the idea of making some igloos, so I sprung for that. To get the right half sphere shape, we need a form to sculpt around. I opted for styrofoam spheres I found at Hobby Lobby. I chopped them in half with a hobby saw and then it was time to work out the form for the tunnel to my igloos. This was pretty simple, just some wooden dowel that I cut to length. I marked out the hole for the entryway and then drilled it out of the styrofoam with a spade bit. Once all three forms were finished, it was time to attach them to the base. I did this with Sculpt-A-Mold, a, a papier-mâché and drywall compound hybrid. You mix it with water and basically return to third grade arts and crafts and start smearing it all over with your hands. The Sculpt-A-Mold accomplishes a few things here. It bulks up the igloos, which I intentionally made undersized because I knew I was going to do this step. It makes the styrofoam more rigid and strong, so later when I add my miniatures, I can drill into it and pin them in with super glue and it gives me a surface that my eventual layer of two-part epoxy putty material will stick better to than styrofoam. As sculpt the mold dries, it can be smoothed with water, which will make for a great form to sculpt on later. You know who's also in great form? Mantic Games, the sponsor of this video. Mantic recently released the third edition of their game, Kings of War, a mass combat fantasy miniature war game. Kings of War is simple to play with straightforward rules. Being able to bash out multiple matches in a gaming session is totally possible. On top of that, you have awesome hobby opportunities to individualize your armies with these massive multi-base concepts. Mantic Games also sent along some characters for me to check out which would add even more spice to these units. It's like each unit in your army can be a mini diorama and I personally love that concept. Kings of War has a thriving competitive scene making it easy to find games. While I was in Canada teaching a miniature painting class, there happened to be a Kings of War tournament going on in the store. If you want to find out about Kings of War's other awesome features, you can check them out at the link in the video description. Thanks for sponsoring this episode, Mantic. Now back to my frosty huts. Since my basement is kind of cold, the sculpt mold was taking a while to set up, so I popped it in my oven with the oven light on. No, I did not actually turn the oven on, just the light in the oven. This keeps it warmer, making for faster cure times. This is also kind of dangerous because you may uh, preheat your oven for something like dinner, let's say, and not realize something is inside. I've definitely never done that and ended up with a scorched hobby product. That never happened, ever. Never. Never. <laughs> After it was cured, I noticed that the sculpt mold was peeling off the base, so I glued it back on with some super glue, making sure to avoid the bare styrofoam with the glue because that would just melt it. Next up, I mixed up some epoxy sculpt and also later added in some milliput to create a thin sheet of epoxy putty to sculpt on. I rolled out the sheet with a wooden dowel that I later replaced with an oiled up acrylic rod because the putty kept sticking to the wood. Once I had a thin sheet, I could start to form it to my igloo, smoothing it out with my fingers and some water, moving it around to fill holes where I didn't have enough. Once it was fairly evenly applied, I was able to start sculpting in that quintessential igloo brick look. I did this via using some metal dental tools, but the tools that did the real heavy lifting were my silicon shapers. If you're new to sculpting or working with any kind of putty, picking up some silicon shapers can be very helpful. I like the ones that are firm, but I don't feel comfortable linking any in the description because there's no standardization online for what firm even means. It's best just to go to an art store and touch them and feel them up to get an idea of how they are. Once I had all three huts done with some nice brick details, I started to smear on some golden light molding paste, which has a nice fine texture to it. It's great for a quick and dirty snow ground cover. Next, I needed to finish off the doorways so my igloos didn't look like they were one massive chunk of snow and ice. 
I took some more epoxy sculpt and super glued a little snake of it to the front and sculpted some bricks using the same tools as before and replicated this on all three of my huts. Next, my igloos were looking a little too friendly. These are war torn and battle men, so it's time for them to actually look like that. I drilled in some holes with my Dremel and grabbed some kebab sticks that I cut to size and stuck in my igloos. After doing this, they kind of started to remind me of orc huts from Warcraft 3. Work, work, something me doing? With all my stakes in place, it was obviously time for some chain. Literally no diorama is made worse by the inclusion of some scale chains, this was an obvious go for me. I simply glued these on with some super glue at each wooden stake. In the spirit of adding more details, I wanted to add a flag of some kind. Oftentimes, a good material for this is heavy foil, but I didn't have any, so I mixed up some more milliput and rolled it out to a thin thickness and cut a little triangle with tabs. I attached it to a piece of brass and then glued it into my base and manipulated the shape of the flag to make it droop nicely. I then added on some more details like larger rocks and shields from a Kings of War sprue that had leftover bits on it and skulls. Obviously, you need skulls. When it comes to making dioramas, variety is key. Let story inspire your creativity when it comes to this. I thought of these igloos as barracks, so the warriors would leave weaponry around and they'd have spikes in order for it to be defensible, etc. It may feel a little silly, but if you're ever in need of a creativity boost for a paint scheme or a basing idea, come up with a little story for your character or a place and that can inform quite a bit. I was feeling a little impatient at this point, so I hit the flag with a heat gun to cure it, and well, it turned out a little bumply and bubbly. I guess we can interpret this as whale skin instead of fabric. I gave the whole base a good scrub with soapy water because I used a lot of oil when rolling out my milliput and epoxy sculpts. I wanted to get rid of that because it would mess up the upcoming paint steps. Speaking of, step one in my painting is to prime it with a light gray from an aerosol can and then began adding in some highlights with some airbrush and some white ink. I was targeting the tops of each individual brick of snow. Next, I came in with some Drakenhof Nightshade, a shade from Games Workshop, and started to shade around the huts and each brick. With the bricks, I used a piece of paper to mask off the brick below to maintain that bright highlight I just put down. This was kind of tedious, but when it was done, it looked really nice. To add some more variety, I sprayed some Gullum and Blue, an old discontinued GW glaze, to get more frosty blue tones on the base. This was all the airbrush work I had planned for, so I hit the whole base with some matte varnish. Ink has a tendency to get lifted when you start to add more hobby products on top of it, so I wanted to seal it all in. My plan is to cover a lot of this in a thin sheet of snow, so not much amazing painting is needed because it'll be obscured. So I started with some base coating. A dark gray for the rocks, a sepia wash for the skulls, a dark silver metallic for the chains and shields, and a dark brown for the stakes. With all those elements base coated, it was time for the moment of truth. A while back, I was sent a snow product called Chrysal from a company called Precision Ice and Snow, and I wanted to give it a try. I was going for a snow drift kind of look that would show the igloo brick detail below, so I angled my diorama at approximately 30 degrees and applied my adhesive. I read the manual and one adhesive they recommended was hairspray, so I sprayed it on and then started to sift on some of the snow product. I did four to five layers of this to build up a nice thicker coating of snow. Midway through, I realized that I should have added some tufts, so I glued on some long and short tufts and resumed applying snow. I let it fully dry and then got my airbrush on high pressure and blew away all the loose snow with a respirator on to avoid breathing in all these particles. I then started to add some of my own snow mixture, which is golden light molding paste mixed with interference blue pigment and soft snow flake. From Woodland Scenics to various parts of the diorama to add more variety. In regards to the Chrysal stuff, I'm kind of let down. It's sparkly, it looks like a snow drift, but because the product is so fine, it gets everywhere and kind of kills the contrast of the igloos that I meticulously applied earlier. It's like if you don't want to get snow literally everywhere, maybe a different product is better. Maybe applying this at an earlier stage is a good idea but it turned out really nicely in certain spots. For instance, look at this snowy bush. It looks so realistic and cool. I brought back some of the blue tones with some more airbrushing of Gulliman Blue. 
I then glued on my Kings of War unit, which you'll see how I painted in next week's video. Painted the base rim black, and that was my diorama finally complete. I know Mantic is sponsoring this video, but the idea of having your units be on a gigantic, awesome diorama base is something that really appeals to me. Despite the base not turning out exactly how I wanted with the snow product, maybe obscuring a little bit too much color detail, I'm really happy with the result. What do you guys think of the base? Let me know if you're into this multi-basing idea. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. If you like this kind of video, I have a few other videos entirely dedicated to basing that you can find in the top right-hand corner of the screen. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, you can do that in a multitude of ways, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, merchandise like t-shirts and hats, and also shopping on Amazon with my Amazon affiliate link. All things linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... Yeah.